this is going to be an interesting video to make involving these two episodes. Because in my Loud House video, I talked about Out on a Limo briefly instead of discussing it like the other episodes involving Lincoln Louds getting tortured. And remember when I say that I'm mostly siding with the sisters and how that this episode is turning Lincoln into the bad guy? Believe me, a lot can happen less than a year ever since I made that Lincoln Louds video and published it back in August of last year. The Crossagantes episode that I'm comparing it to is the kid plays in the picture. Now, the main focus of these two episodes is that the main character gets into the good life or, ha or working on a career that leads them to the good life. But then they know that something else is really important while the other character is dealing with a midlife crisis. And I'm talking about Carl or not Lincoln. The plot in Out on a Limo is Lincoln winning a limo for a day after eating fancy mustard and he promises to take, her si to take his sisters to the Bourbon Burger. But then he encounters Lord Templeby who he gets influenced easily on what it's like to be in, in the good life similar to him which I'm gonna get to later because Considering that I didn't talk about this episode in my Lincoln Loud video last year, I think there's more of a reason why, and no, it's not what you think. In The Kid Who Plays in the Picture, Carl really wants the Al Falco Forges toy set immediately, but he has to wait until his birthday. So in order to make some more money, well not really money, but more fame, in order to get some attention, and by getting free toys, he decides to do a YouTube ch YouTube channel or whatever channel that is described in the Loud House world by unwrapping toys. And for me personally, the motivations involving Carl were just desperately becoming famous or just getting some kind of attention is slightly more better than what Lincoln is doing, but that's not saying much. Here's the thing, upon watching this episode for the first time, I can instantly say that I was signed with Lincoln's sisters. But after watching the entire series, unlike Study Muffin, this episode hasn't aged. And even as a bad episode, compared to The Greenhouse, Born the Family, and No Such Luck. One of the reasons on to why I'm viewing this episode in a different perspective than I was in the past is mainly of how the characters in this episode, despite Kirby being the most likable character in the entire episode, are incredibly mixed. Like, I know some of you guys are going to state that Lincoln was being unlikable or Lord Tibbaby being a terrible snob that only thinks about himself, but the more I think about it, it really feels like that this episode it's difficult to instantly see Lincoln as the bad guy or see Lord Templeby as a terrible influencer because, shocking to say, I don't think that Lincoln was that easily influenced. I don't think he can be that inf easily influenced for how he was developed as the series progressed because when it comes to the Loud Sisters, even if they do have good development here and there, when it comes to those solo episodes, when it comes to their relationship with Lincoln, yeah. To be fair, this episode was around the time well, Born the Family and No Such Luck didn't exist yet, and The Greenhouse was li literally the only episode that existed around the time. And considering that this is part of the fall season, I can let it slide. I'm not saying that the bad things of what Lincoln's sisters did in the future to her brother is unredeemable because at times they do make up sometimes but remember keep in mind that whenever I look at this episode now compared to my first viewing back then which was in 2011 a lot has changed and considering that I didn't include this in my Lincoln Loud video I think it really sums up a lot on how that this episode didn't age unlike other bad episodes did. Like, you can say all you want about the greenhouse, the bra in the family, and no such luck, but when it comes to those episodes for being very infamous, 
it really feels infamous for going way too far. Well, this episode, it didn't go too far, and the more I think about it, the Crossagante's plot does this a lot more better, knowing full well that Carl is the main character and not Ryan or the others. Because I'm gonna be really honest with you, Lincoln being the jerk and out of a, out on a limo, it didn't convince me. And the reason why is, like I say it, I don't think that he's that easily influenced. I understand that he's a kid and he needs to learn a lot, but the thing is. When the episode doesn't age completely, when it comes to you siding with the sisters while in the Crossagantes episode, you got no one to side with, but mainly it's done to get the Crossagantes out of the picture, aside from Carla and Carlota being mostly the main characters of this episode, and I do mean mostly to Carlota. It honestly convinces me that Carla can carry an entire episode on his own, aside from, aside from the assistance of Sergio, compared to Lincoln, who does kill the entire episode, but considering that the other characters play a major factor in the episode, and it's difficult for Lincoln to kill the entire episode, it really shows that the man with a plan can't be able to do the deed when he's being handicapped. And since I've stated handicapped in the past involving Lincoln's situation with anyone in the Loud House, I'm sorry, but this doesn't convince me. It, it, it just doesn't convince me completely. You can say all you want that he deserves what he got in this episode for being the jerk to his sisters and being a snob like Lord Tebuby, but the thing is, with this only taking place in one day or 12 hours, all I can think of is, is how the episode would have done if Lincoln had the limo longer. Which leads to another problem I have for the episode is the fact that Lord Tibbaby sees limos as making him famous. And in all honesty, it just makes me confused on to how he became famous rather than being a bad influencer towards Lincoln. Here's the thing, I understand that limos are supposed to be full with excitement. In fact, I can remember seeing a limo, even if I never been into a limo, back during my kindergarten years or during the first towards fourth grade. And while I understand that Lord Tibbaby can't be instantly popular when it comes to having a limo of his own, keep in mind, when it comes to the activities of what Lord Tibbaby and Lincoln do, they had nothing to do with limos, like the only time that a limo is being put, put into good use is when they are playing a game, mainly in the outdoors by using the limos. That's literally the only thing that Lord Tibbaby does involving his limo, just like Lincoln is doing with his limo. And while I understand that the limo is also important in order to avoid traffic, mainly allowing them to drive past through a red light or green light situation, or in this case, a cop using a wet, using a stop sign. It just really feels like that the limo itself, despite being important to those things, I don't even understand how it would make Lord Tempope a very important and famous person, considering that his motivations is just being interested into limos and how he's abandoned his family because one of his siblings takes a bus to walk and he calls that as a bad thing and it shouldn't be done that way. In the later seasons of The Loud House when they introduce fancy elements, I can't say that this is better than those fancy elements because we don't even get to see the backstory of how Lord Tempelby became famous and becoming a snob because in all honesty, even if Famous snobs exist in the real world, and I understand that this is supposed to be about Lincoln not being a bad influencer, or being badly influenced by people like Lord Tempelby. It just confuses me on the fact that the personality of Lord Tempelby, despite being really selfish, is mainly his interest into limos and nothing more. Like, did he manage to manipulate the drivers to convince that he is worthy on having an exclusive limo to himself because he's a snob. All the while that Lincoln only had the limo for about 12 hours, only to lose it and he decided to ditch Lincoln because he doesn't have a limo. 
I understand, don't, I do, I do not understand what so prestige of a limo is, knowing full well of how this episode is described it. Maybe it's my lack of knowledge of how famous people work, but I know famous people do a lot more than expressing how great their limos are. Now, I'm not sure if this is a close comparison, but Carlota's motivations in this episode compared to Lord Timberby in Out on a Limo, it kind of feels similar on giving guidance towards Carl slash Lincoln on what to do with the limo or do something with a YouTube channel or some sort and do it right. Although the difference is is that Carlota is the better person while Lord Timberby is not. Maybe it's mainly my knowledge of how YouTube channels work in reality while those limos aren't really my thing, but I can totally understand that Carlota would become famous when it comes to a vlog and while Lord Timberby ends up becoming famous because he has a limo. I don't even understand how any of the influences in in Outer Limo works compared to what the kid that plays in the picture does considering that there's no influence or bad influencing going on whatsoever. And for me personally, it really makes the episode a lot more better compared to Outer Limo since there was less to focus on compared to so much going on, and after watching the entire series, believe me, there was a reason onto why I stayed in the past that Study Muffin has aged better compared to Out on the Limo. I mean, it may be confusing at first, but you're gonna have to watch that video, mainly my review of Study Muffin, to understand if you haven't. Now, when it comes to the antagonist of the Classic Antes episode, Monica is in charge of the Super Duper Awesome Toys Inc. or something like that. Well, after Carl becomes successful when it comes to opening his toys, mainly unboxing, he signs a contract. Well, not really sign a contract. He makes Hector to sign a contract while he is sleeping in order to open a lot of toys. Which leads to two of the apartments of the Casagantes being filled with so many boxes. And Carl really enjoys that. And for me personally, compared to what Lincoln was in Out on a Limo, I honestly felt like that Carl did this a lot more better on experiencing a better career and the good life. Even though that I say earlier that it had nothing to do with the good life, but... When it came to Carl enjoying opening toys, he's he's at least doing something rather than being a snob unlike Lord Tibbaby or even Lincoln. Because let me tell you, one of the biggest issues involving Lincoln in this isn't because he's being selfish, it's the fact that he's bad him being badly influenced and him being the jerk really feels forced. What do I mean by that? Well, considering that Lincoln only has 12 hours to keep the limo to himself, and even though he spent most of that time hanging out with Lord Templeby, Lord Templeby rather, rather than taking his sisters to Bob and Bargo, it really feels difficult to see Lincoln acting like a selfish jerk towards, towards his sisters while being a snob, while Lincoln's sisters do the same thing to him, while not being a snob, but being selfish in other episodes, and even episodes in the future. And this may be difficult to believe at first, but when Lord Tempeby stated that though that family members are holding one person back, He's mostly white right when it comes to Lincoln's part. I'm not saying I'm not saying that he's white right completely, considering that he abandoned his family and considered his members mostly a way of holding himself back. But when it comes to Lincoln, he's mostly white. Right. Now look, I understand that in this episode in particular, the Loud Sisters didn't do anything wrong compared to the other episodes that they appear in. But the thing is. Knowing full out that they're barely used completely in this episode rather than being tools for Lincoln to work with when it comes to being part of a family, it kind of works, but as the series progresses when it comes to Kings of the Khan among other episodes, like the Taunting Hour, 
It's difficult to take this seriously. Like, really, 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 really difficult to take the Loud Siblings seriously when you have the knowledge of what they did in episodes after this. And the sad thing is, in the Loud House movie, while Lincoln needs to save his family, all the while just abandoning the old lives of what Lowy and the others have back in Royal Woods. This was actually done much more, much more better considering that they were mostly focused on having the Lao siblings being somewhat intelligent and aware of what is really going on. But as the series progressed, it really feels like that their lives don't mean anything when they have the luxury in Scotland. And that's the sad thing is that even when this episode doesn't give more execution towards the sisters, and yet it has this one moment that instantly supposed to age well when it comes to them being better than Lincoln, considering that they have better professions than Lincoln, when it comes to putting those professions into play despite holding Lincoln back. I can't take them seriously after watching the Loud House movie and all the other things that they did. Believe me when I say this, is that when I first watched this episode for the first time, the Loud Siblings, mainly Lori, had a point on the fact that Lincoln is no better than them. And while it may stay true as the series progresses, it doesn't change the fact that they are mostly holding Lincoln back, mainly came to the car despite of what Lincoln and Clyde were doing by kin kidnapping the kitty, all the while being all the while calling Lincoln a life wound, or despite saving their lives twice, first being the Loud House movie, and save Royal Woods by saving the entire town of Royal Woods. You see how this episode can't be able to age, despite being this one scene being the best out of anything, and yet at the same time, due to how the characters were betrayed as the series progressed, it got a lot more less meaningful. It makes it feel like that Lincoln needs to do everything, which does work in some instances, but when it comes to this in the Loud House movie, and how after saving the town from being flooded, he still is being caught by a life ruiner when it comes to production order rather than release order, then... I can't take Lincoln being a joke seriously, and when it comes to him being badly influenced by Lord Tebbleby, believe me, I do not like Lord Tebbleby. In fact, he's one of the only characters that, that only appear once that I do not want him to appear ever again. But let me tell you, in the other episodes where Lincoln was being a joke, especially with the ties that bind, which is only in one sequence where he fantasizes himself on being the only child. That actually works considering that Lincoln was fantasizing himself on what life would be like with him being the only child. And for me personally, that's the biggest selfish Lincoln moment out of the entire show compared to what he does in Out on a Limo. Trust me when I say this. While ties that bind didn't age well compared to no such luck that appealed that made that made the parents go back to what they said about not kicking anyone else out, it doesn't change the fact that Lincoln was selfish in that episode for only in this one scene and the fact that this one scene established him being more selfish than out of the limo or basically anything else in future episodes. I'm starting to convince that people are instantly hammering in on Lincoln being in the wall a lot, and even though that it may be the case, but what I mean on selfishness, I can't. I, I just can't. Like, Ties That Bind is literally the top moment of him being selfish compared to anything else that he does in this show. And let me be real with you, when Kawa is experiencing the good life by opening multiple toys, the biggest sacrifice of them all is the fact that he has to miss out all family activities, mainly going out for pizza, going on a train, which is part of the subway, among other things. And the fact that Lincoln doesn't experience any of that in Out on a Limo just really shows that him being badly influenced is a lot more difficult to take it se to take it seriously. Like, when people are criticizing Lincoln, especially the bad things that he did, 
I try to understand, but whenever I look at how he's being handicapped by so many people, it's difficult to root for him or not, and for me personally, it's ridiculous when an episode, or multiple episodes, wants you to root for a character or not. While in the Cross of Gantes episode, you don't really root for Carl, but at the same time, he's moving forward in a good life since it probably took days after getting toys while Lincoln only had the limo for 12 hours. And believe me, when Monica, Mod, Monica is threatening Carl that if he doesn't do anything in the contract, he, she would take away the Mikado, Mikado which is the Quasagante's working place. Otherwise, they won't be able to live in the apartments. And do you want to know the sad thing about this whole thing, and I do mean the sad thing? The first time I see this episode, mainly out on a limo when it comes to the loud siblings waiting impatiently after three hours of Lincoln not returning, I can instantly feel what they're expressing, but as of now, I couldn't due to how they were executed as the series progressed. Well, in the Cross of Gandhi's episode, did it a lot more better knowing full well that Carl would get sued, which means that anything that the other characters have, they will lose. And for me personally, it's a lot more better compared to how Lincoln was was developed on being badly influenced, knowing full well that he had less to worry about compared to what Kara dealt with in the kid that plays in the picture. Well, not only that he uses his stuff, but basically his family member's belongings. You know, whenever I think about the writers behind the Cross of this episode, despite not taking the show seriously at times, Whenever they mostly take it seriously at times, it's mainly if they took inspiration from the old Lalitas episodes and translate them into a better version in the Cross of Gondes episodes. And they did the same thing with the Greenhouse and the Power Play episodes involving the Loud House and the Cross of Gondes. I don't know about you, but whenever this show does something like that, it really shows that they're learning from their mistakes and can instantly see the problems of the earlier episodes. Although, when it comes to the new Vitals in the later seasons of The Loud House and the Cross of Gande is officially, is officially a thing of the past, I don't even know what's next. I guess the only thing that's worth discussing involving Out on the Limo is the second half of the episode. Well, Lincoln is being a jerk all the while he gets kicked out due to his time being up. All the while being kicked out of the club because it doesn't have a limo. Now, here's one of the reasons on to why that some of the scenes of Lincoln being a jerk just doesn't work for me is that it really feels forced and it really feels like that he's just trying to be a selfish jerk and yet at the same time it's not doing a good job. Like, I've watched these scenes before making my review or analysis of this in the Cross of Gondes episode, and it still didn't convince me. Like, it just doesn't. And one of the reasons why I, that when some fans or reviewers take Lincoln seriously when it comes to him being the one and him being mostly the problem of episodes, it doesn't convince me considering that when they try to hammer it in when it comes to them, expressing on the fact that they do not like Lincoln completely and don't treat him as a god like some fans do. I still can't be able to take him seriously considering that his tone, despite being difficult to take him as the good guy, it doesn't convince me because it really feels like it's forced and really feels off-putting for Lincoln to sound like. Even the clones from the Jimmy Neutron episode did a much more better job and one of the characters, despite being instantly fooled even though they're supposed to be intelligent, can instantly tell that they have terrible accents, but though much more better accents and tones compared to what Lincoln did in this episode. And let me tell you, the fact that he said that Kobe is just the man driving the limo and the tone is supposed to make him more unlikable. 
it, it didn't work for me considering that Kobe, despite being a likeable character, doesn't get a lot of screen time in this. And considering that he mostly drives Lake into anywhere where Lord typically goes, especially on a yacht, I feel like he should have been a supporting character rather than a driver of a limo type of character. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you really want me to feel more sympathy towards him despite being the most likable character in the entire episode, do more rather than being a driver in a limo. Anyway, I think that one of the reasons on to why that the torture in this episode involving Lincoln hasn't been talked about is mainly the fact that people are mostly focusing on Lincoln gain his just results, and with the punishment that he gets is justified. But the way I see it, unlike the torture that you went through in episodes that I discussed in the Lincoln Loud video, it really feels like that the just results that he gets is mainly the fact that he spent time with Lord Tebbaby rather than, rather than being a jock. Because that's literally all I see involving the punishment that he gets is mainly the opposite of the good life, and mainly a hobo or a homeless person. And for me personally, him being the homeless person or a hobo just makes this a lot more difficult to go against Lincoln rather than seeing him as someone that you're supposed to see his sisters as the good guys or good girls in this case. While all I see is, is mainly just forcing in on the Lincoln torture but done it even poorly on not even trying to make Lincoln unlikable in my eyes. Like, compared to the Loud House movie where Lincoln got his fame by being the Duke, despite being poorly executed, I'm honestly starting to convince that they took inspiration on how Lincoln becoming famous actually means a lot more different compared to having a limo because in all honesty upon watching the ending of this episode and knowing how a limo shouldn't be that important compared to a family i honestly don't know how the logic in this episode works at times since that this episode has aged poorly after nearly seven years and let me tell you this episode just goes all over the place rather than focusing on the elements on Lincoln focusing on what's really important while dealing with what the good life would have been like if he spent more days rather than 12 hours in fact one of the criticisms that I've heard from people talking about this episode is where the broadcast people are broadcasting Lincoln in front of so many people when they did that earlier in, the, earlier in the episode and the Loud Sisters don't even see Lincoln on TV. Either they're watching the Dream Boat or anything else, but in all honesty, the fact that people discuss that, which was actually six years ago when it comes to 2017 and a few mentions when it comes to other users, it really shows how little sympathy I have with the Loud Siblings in this episode compared to those solo episodes. You know, it really shows that with that type of criticism coming to play, being a major factor against the Loud Siblings despite being mostly in the white in this episode, is honestly a lot more complicated knowing forward that there isn't ever a way for these types of episodes involving Lincoln getting tortured done correctly while the Loud Siblings are being portrayed in the white. It really shows that after 10 months of making that Lincoln Loud video, a lot can happen less than a year. Why is it that in the Cross of Guardians episode where it did less compared to Out on the Limo, did, did it a lot more better despite the fact that it doesn't take itself seriously at times? Like, Less, in, less is more is mostly important, but when it comes to these two episodes, it didn't have the problem. It's the fact that the Quasagantes did that format a lot more better unintentionally compared to the Loud House episode. Like, it's one thing to think about quality over quantity, which is better than quantity over quality. 
But geez, the way Koa completely destroyed the Alfalco Fortress, which, which is something that he ever wanted on his birthday, and he ended up gaining it in his toy career and mainly his way of the good life. I'm gonna be really honest with you. That's actually a lot more satisfying compared to the Loud Siblings giving Lord Tipperby his just desserts. Because as far as I'm concerned, squally mustard on Lord Tipperby, all the while being mostly a bad influence towards Lincoln, despite the even though I've already described the issues of it, it didn't really convince me. Like, Lord Tipperby is a terrible character, but at the same time, I've seen much worse characters that people have been over-exaggerating after watching Out of Limo for so many times. And the fact that the Crossagante's ending is much more better despite the fact that it wasn't trying to teach a moral lesson compared to the Loud House is really saying something. I know I'm being way too critical and way too open-minded with these types of episodes, but in all honestly, after seeing the same opinion multiple times in these episodes, all the while just witnessing the fact that we're never going to see an episode like this ever again or any returning characters from the first seasons, maybe there's more of a reason onto why I don't take moral lessons in these episodes seriously. I'm not saying this because I've watched My Little Pony Friendship is Magic because I barely watch that show anymore and moved on from it, but it really feels like that the moral lessons that this show is teaching, all the while repeating itself over and over again in the future, maybe it's the fact that they can't be able to do anything different by ditching the moral lessons completely. Maybe it really shows onto why people are forgetting what they did in previous episodes and doing the same thing again and again without learning anything. Either the fact that the characters are idiots or the fact that they just can't be able to move forward completely and understand what the, what the characters feel whenever they interact it with. Believe me, once I get into that Loud House project in the future, you may understand onto why I don't take a lot of episodes seriously, especially in a few instances like House Flip. It's mainly the backlash it got, which somewhat makes sense since that it was around the time where the Lao fans are leaving the franchise, but believe me, once I get into that episode in that video, or by chance making a separate video of it, you'll understand onto why that episode gave me anxiety. For all the wrong reasons. <sighs> well, that's another long Loud House vs. Crossagantes project in a while. And for me personally, I knew that this was gonna happen, but at the same time, I wanted to get this out of the way in order to talk about Out on Limo. And I'm also thankful that it's also similar to the Crossagantes episode. Out of Limo has been on my mind for such a while that whenever I think about it, I can instantly see it as a different episode than it was in the past, unlike other people who doesn't change their opinions at times. I understand that it takes time for a person to express their opinion towards an episode differently, but for me personally, whenever I look at these episodes after watching them for the first time for about a year ago, they just haven't been the same like they were in the past. And believe me, the more I think about the good inc inc incidents in this episode, mainly Lincoln's brief interactions with Catherine Morgan, it's mainly how the new writers brought her back in season 6, well not really brought her back, but mainly have her play a role when it comes to some of the episodes involving Lincoln and the Action News team. This really feels unintentional when you think about it, knowing full well that they wanted to do more with the background characters, but it's really saying a lot while the other background characters or the other supporting characters from the, the Loud Siblings solo episodes didn't get much attention, mainly Carol Pinchway and Darcy, just to name a few. 
But considering it doesn't even make up anything at all in this episode, the Quasigantes episode is the superior episode over Out on a Limo. To be honest, I'll never see the day that a Kara episode that didn't try hard did a much more better job on handling the good life compared to Out on a Limo. And while I understand that the first Light House vs. Quasigante centered around Carl and Lincoln involving swimming. Well, aside from Carl not learning how to swim, or Lincoln just wants the pool all to himself, Carl ended up winning. Compared to these two episodes, they're a lot more different, and it's mainly the fact that the Loud House episode was one of the worst episodes from season one, while this episode was mainly just there for the sake of adding more episodes into Season 2 of The Quasigantes. There's a lot to know about the episodes when it comes to my optimism perspective on both shows. I've been doing these for way longer, for basically half a year at this point, and in all honesty, the fact that there are more episodes to compel, I'm not even sure when I'm ever going to stop, and I'm not even sure if I'm ever going to complete an entire schedule of Sundays and some occasions off Mondays of doing these videos. But considering that Summer Palooza 4 is happening at the moment, it's it's not going to happen completely. I'm going to be really honest with you, they are probably going to be disappointed that there's going to be at least one Sunday that doesn't involve these types of videos. But it's not going to take that long in the upcoming weeks. I'm giving out on the limo a 3 out of 10 while the kid plays in the picture gets a 6.5 out of 10. Mm -hmm.